the Enneagram as a symbol uh, has, we don't know how long it's been around. Hmm. Uh, some attribute it to uh, Pythagoras and sacred geometry. Uh, others think it kind of came in the Middle Ages with the confluence of mysticism, Christian mysticism, Judaic and Islamic. Uh, but we don't really know, we don't mm -hmm. have facts about that symbol. What we do know is that in the 19, about 1915, 1920, a man, a teacher, mystic, uh, Gurdjieff, yes. presented this to his students. But he didn't talk about it in terms of personality. He talked about it in terms of the movement of the energy of life. And that it's kind of a, I kind of look at it as a, um, a map of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. And you can read a lot into it. So he didn't teach the Enneagram of personality, but he talked about uh, chief features in each one. And, and he taught actually through movement. Mm -hmm. And there were dances that went with the Enneagram. You move ahead to the late uh, 60s, mm -hmm. and uh, a Bolivian man in South America, another kind of mystic teacher, uh, began to teach in his teachings with the Enneagram. And he began to add personality called ego fixations on top of it. And he uh, used it as part of his program for spiritual development and enlightenment. In about, I think, 1970, mm -hmm. uh, a man named Claudio Naranjo, uh, was, he was from uh, South America, but he was working in the United States. He was a psychiatrist. And he was also very interested in personality systems and psychometrics, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of other things. He went to South America, kind of on a personal journey, and he spent time with Oscar Echazo. And he was introduced to the Enneagram as Oscar was working with it. When he came back to the United States, that's when things really began, I think, as far as our understanding of what we have as the Enneagram today. Uh, it's kind of like the big bang mm -hmm. of the Enneagram in that what came together was these kind of mystical teachings with his understanding of uh, modern psychology and personality systems. Mm -hmm. So he began to do the blending oh, of spirituality, mysticism, and psychology. And that's really what you were interested in yes. professionally. So now let's go to you and talk about yes. you professionally and how you intersected with it. So the, uh, it was like 1989, uh, things happened in strange ways, but mm -hmm. someone gave me a book called The Enneagram. Uh, it was by Helen Palmer. And I, this is interesting, but I didn't quite, couldn't quite absorb it. But shortly after that, I was on a retreat, a 10 day retreat, and the person who was running it had just done training in the Enneagram. And she had a colleague, who, and she said to the colleague, because I was gonna work with this woman, would you please type Frank? And I didn't know what this was mm -hmm. about. And she came away saying, I think he's a type one. And my friend said, oh no, you know, that was the first response. Right. To, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, but what happened is that I began to study and I began, I made friends with this woman who was a trained teacher. And as I began my training in, as a therapist right. and seeing clients, I would consult with her from the Enneagram point of view. What do you think this person might be? And I was doing consulting with companies and I would bring her in to help me understand these people mm -hmm. and they would work with her. So I was able to kind of watch and learn from her. And I just kept doing more study and more learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, in... I, it was, I had private practice as a therapist. Right. And as I sat there with people, I thought, oh, if they only knew this. Oh, yeah, yeah. It would speed things up just greatly. So you start blending it? So I said, well, I gotta fig I'm gonna have to teach this. Yeah. And um, I, I began to teach, I guess, in 2007, just to clients, only certain clients who mm -hmm. I felt would be open to it. And that began to spread, but still, I was interested in family and friends knowing this truthfully because it would make my life easier is what I thought. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if they had this language, yes. if they had this point of view, oh, we could just, it would just be so much more fun. And truthfully, that's what I love about it the most. There's so much joy that comes I agree. out of not being locked in to these patterns. I agree, especially if you can come from the understanding Every one of us is making decisions and looking through a lens of life that is unique and different from the other. And we're making an assumption that someone kind of understands life through a similar lens as ourselves. That's not true at all. 
It's not. <laughs> All you have to do is get married and or whatever, and you'll find that out, you know? Yeah. Well, there's where it really shows up in relationships. Yes. You know, and we recognize that, oh my God, you really have a whole different take on things, don't you? Yes. And, yes. And when we have see people with a different take, we assume there's something wrong with them. Right. Because don't you know this is the way it is? Right. And they say, no. Can that's you, not how I see it at that's all. That's not how I see it at all. Yeah. So it really is about perception. Uh, yes. You, see. you and I talked about that uh, this yeah. before, off camera, before we prepared for this. And we we're talking about how it allows a person to set up your relationships with others really based on compassion and understanding. Yes, that's one of the great gifts of these teachings. I don't know anything that has allowed me and people I know to develop our compassion. Mm -hmm. And I really emphasize in my book, kindness. Yes, you do. In fact, I've written something down here for yeah. your book. <laughs> because I had to say, I mean, the Enneagram is one of the tools I have, but I've been studying things for the last 40 years and teaching, you know, kind of mm -hmm. from the human potential movement and mm -hmm. so forth. And when I wrote this book, I really had to go back to zero and say, now, why would I talk about the Enneagram? Right. Uh, I drank the Kool-Aid a long time ago, right. but not everybody has. So right. why the Enneagram? Why self-awareness? Right. What is this all about? And I kind of came to see that if we can't be kinder to one another, then does all of our consciousness work really matter? No, it doesn't.